Greetings and salutations, everyone. No matter if you consider yourself a hardcore or a casual, raider or a social, whether you pine for the good old days or you love the game the way it is right now, I think we can all agree that there is a massive divide in the community right now, and the health of the game is far from perfect. With over 6 million players quitting in under a 2 year span, you would think that Blizzard would be desperate to distance themselves from Warlords as much as possible. Since I already covered that in my Why Legion Won't Save WoW video, I'm not going to get into that too much today, but feel free to check that out if you want to get my thoughts on that. This video is going to instead focus on how WoW can be fixed, and how WoW can get back to its roots, and how it can become a game that everyone enjoys again. Now, full disclosure here, a lot of these ideas are a compromise. Personally, I would love to see the game go back to more of a Burning Crusade style of gameplay complete with threat, crowd control, and swinging mana potions. But I think that going back to that so sudden would cause a nuclear meltdown in the first time someone that joined in Pandaria tried to do a 45 minute long heroic, got told to sheep something, or got told that they have to hold back their DPS. It really is time that we face some cold, hard facts about the direction that WoW has taken. The fact that WoW has lost over 6 million subscriptions in just under 2 years. The fact that every expansion since Wrath has ended with less subscriptions than it started with. The naysayers will sit there and tell you that the game is just fine, that it is one of the most popular MMOs still on the market, and that it is a highly profitable endeavor for Blizzard. But is that really true? The fanboys, on the other hand, will scream at you at the top of their lungs, if you don't like it, why don't you just quit? Look at your subscriptions! That is exactly what's happening! And I hate to break it to you, but if WoW hits 2 million players, it is done, and I'll explain why. Let's do some basic math here. As recently as 2012, Blizzard boasted over 5,000 employees, but that was also back when Titan was in the works, and although quite a few of those have merged over into Overwatch, uh, some were without a doubt let go. So for the sake of argument, let's just say that there are 3,000 employees ranging from a receptionist all the way up to a developer. And since Blizzard is located in California, we're also going to pretend that each and every one of them makes the California minimum wage, which is $10 an hour. If you think you're going to get a developer for $10 an hour, you are insane. But again, we're just pretending here. So each of these employees makes about $20,000 a year, for a grand total of $60 million in payroll alone. On the other side of the spectrum, let's say Legion really is as disappointing as I think it's going to be. The last time subscription numbers were released, the game boasted 5.5 million players, its lowest since vanilla, but that is highly subjective. First off, that excludes the fact that most people do not pay or play for a full year anymore. Anyone that played even one day during that time frame was counted as a subscriber. Second off, that doesn't include China, which if you are not aware, does not use the same subscription model as we do. I don't want to spend too much time on it, so I'll throw the source down in the info tab below, but to summarize, when WoW was launched in China in the summer of 2005, a lot of changes had to be made to make the Chinese government happy. Skeletons were replaced with bodies, gore had to be covered up, and abominations were turned into giant straw men or even had their wounds stitched shut. Hell, even undead couldn't have any bones showing. The Chinese government was also worried that children would neglect their schoolwork, so an internal mechanism was put into place that essentially gave the players a debuff that reduced their health, damage, and healing done by 50% after just 3 hours of gameplay. Of course, like gamers always do, ways were found around this though, and simply playing several different characters on different accounts meant that once you hit the debuff, you simply logged onto an alt and carried on leveling. By 2011, it was painfully obvious though that this was being exploited anyways, and the restriction was finally lifted, and now Chinese players simply pay $5 for 66 and a half hours of game time each month. The kicker though, is that the game time never expires, so technically an account from 2012 with 8 minutes of game time on it still counts as a subscription. Anyways, back on topic, let's say Legion does tank, and we hit that 2 million mark. At $15 a month, this comes out to about $360 million, or about $300 million in profit. But that is assuming that every one of those 2 million players plays the entire 12 months of the year, which they never do. And there is a ton of stuff not being factored in, such as health benefits, bonuses, 
even things like keeping on the lights and payroll taxes. Hell, that doesn't even factor in things like Michael Morheim's $8 million a year salary or the people that have two or three years worth of game time banked up through tokens, which I personally know of a few people that did that once they hit the gold cap. No, the reality of it is, the expenses just for running the WoW servers is probably closer to the 300 million mark alone. 60 million isn't a bad chunk of change, but when you consider that Hearthstone alone earns nearly 20 million dollars each month, and games like League of Legends earned a staggering 640 million dollars in 2014 with a fraction of the staffing. You can quickly see that the profit being made by WoW at this point is a mere pittance and it's starting to make sense why Blizzard really doesn't seem to care to keep it going. So what needs to be done? If I was in charge, the very first thing that I would do is create a poll and put it on Battle.net. I would make it so that not only can current WoW players vote, but veterans as well. Maybe throw in a pet or a mount or something simple to encourage people to vote or something like that. It's important to do this because even though I'm well intentioned, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe the game is fine the way it is, and maybe nothing needs to be changed. Then again, maybe I'm right. This poll would include things like, is the game too casual? What was your favorite expansion? Do you want to see more challenge in the game? Should Dungeon Finder and Raid Finder be scrapped, or at the very least changed? And finally, if these changes were implemented, would it be enough to bring you back to the game? The reason this is a great idea is because it gives a much better perspective if 10 or 15 million people were to vote. And honestly, if 200,000 say the game is fine and 10 million say, no, I'm really not enjoying this game anymore, then we could finally end this argument and say, look, you guys are the minority, too bad, the fan base voted, and you lost. The next thing I would do is truly merge the battle groups. No more of this cross realms antisocial bullshit. I actually had to put some thought into this one because there are a lot of variables. What if you have two players named Legolas, for example? Obviously both players are going to want that name, and I think this is why Blizzard has shied away from doing this for so long. For me though, it's simple. Any character below level 40 that has been inactive for more than a year would be given second priority to any active player. Seriously, how many level 23 dwarf warriors named Gimli are out there that haven't been touched since vanilla? Any characters between level 40 and 100 would receive the same treatment, only I would extend that to about 2 years. There would be some complications with it, but honestly, it is so important to get everyone back on the same server where reputations actually matter. Different 10 and 25 man raids must come back, with different loot tables also. Not only does it help break up the monotony, but it gives the player something to look forward to, and a goal to work towards. I realize that this 4 difficulty Diablo 3 style of raids makes it a whole lot easier to program, but it also makes the game incredibly boring, and since the art team seems to be the one team left that has some passion for the job, I honestly don't think they will mind that much. I am alright if there's a normal and a heroic difficulty back like there was in Wrath, because obviously there are different skill levels for players. I also get that for smaller teams, 10 mans work ideally, which is why I propose giving flex rating another shot with a plus or minus 2 option for 25 mans. I think that when flex rating was initially introduced, it was a good idea, but it was poorly implemented. Next I think that we have to address the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Raid finder and looking for group need to be changed. Now before anyone loses their mind, I get it, you're busy. Vanilla and Burning Crusade were over a decade ago. Even I myself have to admit, at almost 33 years old, I don't have nearly the time or energy that I did at 21. I also work a lot more overtime than I did when uh, I just had a 40 hour 9 to 5 job. So grinding for 4 hours in Molten Core 3 to 5 days a week like we did back in Vanilla is probably out of the question for me. And I don't even have a wife or children like some people do, so I get it. But what about the 40% or so of players that join in Wrath or Cataclysm, or later on, that has no idea what the game used to be like? Shouldn't they be allowed to make their own decisions? Just because we can't neckbeard it out and play for hours on end, is it really fair to those that can? Raid Finder is nice because it makes things so convenient, but it is hands down the biggest killer of our social aspect in the game. It allows people to be absolute dicks with zero repercussions. Raid Finder gives you easy rewards, which also makes them feel cheap, and it bothers the hell out of me that somebody that joined in Pandaria will never get to experience what it was like to work their ass off for their gear and have people stop in Ironforge to expect them. They will never know what it's like to get Ashkandi. 
or full Grand Marshal gear and go out and absolutely rape someone in world PvP. They will never understand the satisfaction of then exploding when a boss that you have been wiping on for hours finally goes down. I do feel that Raid Finder and Looking for Group have a place in the game, as it does need some catch-up mechanics. But that is exactly what they should be, catch-up mechanics. So to me, Looking for Raid should only be the previous tier of raiding, using Warlords as an example. Heimel would have only been released once Blackrock Foundry came out, and Blackrock Foundry would have only been released once Hellfire Citadel came out. Hellfire Citadel looking for raid would have only been opened up about the last six months or so of the expansion, just so that everyone has a chance to see the content. Looking for Dungeon needs a touch up also for the same reason. I think it has a place in the game, but probably about three months after launch, around the time that we are all running our alts and stuff. Let's be honest here, you should all be doing that stuff with your guild anyways. But I need it! I promise you guys, you don't. You think you do, but you don't. I would inflate the stats. Sounds strange, right? Hear me out though. A well geared tank has somewhere in the rough ballpark of 500,000 to 800,000 health, give or take how your stats are itemized. Those numbers are being increased anyways in Legion, and even with an average tank, you have between 1.5 to 2 million health, so why not increase them just a little bit more? Back in vanilla, I distinctly remember my warrior having about 5200 unbuffed health, and how much even adding just another 100 health was kind of a big deal. I would love to capture that moment again, and inflating health pools just a little bit more would do this. So rather than saying I have 5,283,000 health, you would just say I have 5283k or just 5283. DPS will work very similar, and rather than hitting for 1,628,323, you would simply hit for 1628k, or just 1628. Mana, spell power, all these things could be brought back by simply inflating the health pools just a little bit more, and the beautiful thing is this system is already essentially in place. When you go to places like Ice Crown Citadel, for example, your damage multipliers work differently than when you were out grinding in, oh, let's just say, Tannin Jungle. Some difficulty from gear and buffs must return. Although I get the bring the player, not the class argument, and I get that buffs aren't necessarily fun, I absolutely despise the ability prune that has been taking place since Wrath. Part of being in a group was just how much stronger you were as a class from having a variety of players and roles. Now, from a mythic player's perspective, I get it. I really do. I remember we had a Shaman and Burning Crusade that we took along just for Wind Fury Totem, despite the fact that he typically came in near the bottom of damage meters. I also remember a time in Wrath where we took along a mage that was nowhere near competitive on meters, just because we wanted Arcane Intellect and a food table. But guys, come on. Can you really sit there and tell me that this still doesn't happen? Look at the damage disparity between a Subtlety Rogue and an Arms Warrior. What about an arcane mage and any death knight? In this scenario, why wouldn't you just take 15 mages and rogues along and tell everybody else to piss off? Maybe some mythic raiders can correct me, but I'm sure rerolling still happens, and I know without a doubt, flavor of the month classes still pop up in PvP. Speaking of PvP players, can these guys get some love for God's sakes? Seriously. I personally am not big on arena or battlegrounds, and quite frankly, I'm pretty freaking terrible at it. It's just not my cup of tea, but even I have to admit, these guys are kind of treat being treated like second class citizens. Although I think some big steps have been taken in Legion, such as the prestige system, could be a good thing, but I still think there's a lot of room to improve. I mean, just follow the money. The 2014 League of Legends World Championship Grand Prize purse was valued at $1 million. StarCraft II Grand Prize, $500,000. Call of Duty Ghosts. 1 million. Heroes of the Storm, 500,000. Counter Strike Global Offensive, $250,000. So, where does WoW rank on this list? 1 million? 2 million? Nope. $120,000. How generous. Speaking of generous, how about we generously update the graphics of the Vanilla Battlegrounds for Christ's sakes? How in the blue hell did that slip past them in the Cataclysm refresh? And seriously, how long would it take to redo those? If it were up to me, I would redo every battleground and arena with the Warlord's art style. When people watch someone doing arenas on Twitch, I would want them to see the most beautiful settings that they possibly could. And I'm sorry to say, but there must be some exclusivity at the top tier of gear. 
Raided arenas and battlegrounds must go back to separate sets of gear. If you work your ass off to get a 2000 rating, you should be able to reap the rewards. Finally, since gold is clearly becoming an issue, this is something that we must address. Gold drop rates in Warlords were way too generous, but now we have another problem. Do you nerf it in Legion? Do you punish people that were not able to hit gold cap? And what about the people that have a ton of gold? Raising the gold cap in Legion will help this issue some, but the, for the most part, gold just feels cheap and worthless. So let's add a new currency, Platinum. Essentially 1000 gold would equal 1 Platinum. This way no one gets punished, it adds value to the currency again, and if you have a ton of gold, you will still have a ton of platinum. I was a little worried about new players coming into the game at first, but you also have to realize that since we no longer have to play for talent points, mounts are cheap, looking for group and the cataclysm quest overhaul added a ton of gear, no one really spends gold while leveling, so new players will be just fine. There is a ton of stuff that didn't quite make the list, and maybe you disagree with some or all of the things I mentioned, and that's okay. Everyone's tastes are a little bit different, but the sad reality of it is, no matter if people want to admit it or not, the game is in its death throes right now, and it shouldn't be. And if the middle ground isn't found, we're going to quickly find ourselves without a game to play at all. I don't want WoW to die, I just want it to not suck anymore. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take it easy. It's been a pleasure. Alpha out.